so happy we finally get to fly business class. <laughs> <laughs> have you always wanted to fly business class on Emirates? So have we. We were fortunate enough to check this item off our aviation bucket list recently as a family when we flew round trip to Nairobi, Kenya for our first ever African safari. One thing many people don't realize is that Emirates business class flights are not all the same, even on the same route. And if you book the wrong type of flight, you'll be paying the same high fare, but you'll get a far inferior experience. So if you want to avoid this mistake and you want to know lots of other tips on how to make the most of your Emirates business class experience, keep watching. One perk of booking a business class flight on Emirates is that it comes with free chauffeur drive service. They'll send a black car to pick you up and drive you to the airport. As of 2019, unfortunately, Emirates no longer offers the service to passengers who book their business class using either miles or through an upgrade offer from economy. So just keep that in mind. For passengers flying out of New York, this is not just limited to Manhattan. We were able to book our chauffeur drive to pick us up from our home in Brooklyn, for example. We've been fortunate enough to have experienced many a luxury airport transfer over the years, and based on that, I have to say I was pretty disappointed in the quality of the Emirates chauffeur drive. Emirates outsources these rides to Black Lane. If you're not familiar with Black Lane, it's basically like Uber if Uber only allowed you to book Uber Black rides. Because it's a platform, it's open to basically any chauffeur who owns or leases a premium vehicle that meets Black Lane specifications. And I don't get the impression that there's a lot, if any, training or quality control in the actual customer service of the drivers themselves. Since we were a party of four, Emirates actually sent us two cars. Serge and Sean's driver wasn't bad, but the one who drove me and Ella was pretty unprofessional. Even though he'd gotten to our home about 20 minutes early, when we approached the car and he got out to grab our bags, he was still tucking his shirts into his pants as if he hadn't even finished getting dressed for work. The driver assigned to us for the drive home on our return leg was also not exactly on his A-game. He opened the trunk of the car, and then for an awkwardly long moment, he just kind of stood there staring at us, making no move whatsoever to pick up our bags and actually put them in the trunk. Even the average Uber driver does better in that regard. When we got to JFK, we headed to the dedicated check-in area for business class passengers. Check-in was very efficient. Last time we flew Emirates was for our trip to the Maldives. The trip itself was amazing, but we did the almost 24 hour journey there in economy, which was really, really rough. Especially when the passenger in front of me aggressively reclined all the way down as soon as the seatbelt sign was turned off and stayed there. So after that experience, we were especially grateful to be able to fly business class on this trip to Nairobi. Ah, uh, Terminal 4, back to our home. Just, uh, <laughs> Terminal 5 just doesn't hit the same. Terminal 4 is where it's at. We headed to the Emirates Lounge, which is located near Gate A5 in JFK's Terminal 4. It's very spacious with areas for lounging, working, and eating. The lounge staff were all very attentive and courteous, but everyone seemed a bit nervous and on edge, as if it was their first week on the job, or as if there was a particularly tough supervisor on duty that day. The lounge serves a great assortment of food, and the champagne flowed freely. When's the last time you had dates? They're dating in Dubai. Roll the clip! Our first flight was from JFK to Dubai, and this was on the Airbus A380, which is the world's largest passenger airliner. One cool thing about the A380 is that it's actually a double-decker aircraft. On most Emirates A380s, the top deck of the plane is where all the first and business class seats are, while the entire bottom deck of the plane is where you'll find the economy seats. When you board for the flight at JFK, economy passengers turn left to go down the ramp to the lower jet bridge, while first and business class passengers walk straight ahead. We put our bags away and settled into our seats. You did that from now you won't have to worry about reaching because mm. there are no right. <laughs> Before I continue telling you about our flight, let me first explain the layout of the cabin on the A380's upper deck. At the very front of the plane are the first class seats. This is where you'll find those famous first class bathrooms with the onboard showers. You know, the ones from that Casey Neistat video that all of us have watched. After that come galleys and restrooms, followed by the first of two business class cabins in a 1-2-1 configuration. There's a large one with 14 rows of business class seats, then a dividing wall, then a mini cabin with just five rows of business class seats, and behind that you'll find the onboard bar and lounge, plus more galleys and restrooms. So which business class cabin is the better choice? The large cabin or the smaller mini cabin? 
We actually flew in both on this trip, and I can tell you that each one has its pros and cons. The mini cabin feels more intimate and exclusive, but because the bar is right behind you, it can get loud if there are a lot of passengers congregating to drink. Thankfully, this wasn't really an issue on our flight, but it can happen. In the large cabin, you don't have to worry about noise from the bar, but you lack the intimacy and privacy of the mini cabin. So it's a trade-off. The flight attendants came around with a pre-departure drink of Veuve Clicquot, and we even got some hot towels, which felt lovely. One thing I appreciate about Emirates is how international their cabin crew is. It's not unusual to find multiple continents represented on a single flight. As you'd expect, the service is excellent. But more importantly, you can tell that the flight attendants truly enjoy their job, they enjoy working with each other, and they enjoy interacting with the passengers. That positive vibe is really what makes a flight pleasant. And it's a far cry from the service on Delta One, for example, which we flew to Brussels a few years ago. The flight attendants there were so much on autopilot that they actually offered our daughter a glass of champagne, before suddenly snapping out of it and realizing that she just offered alcohol to a 10-year-old. Soon enough, it was time for takeoff. It's hard to describe how different it feels to take off in an A380. The aircraft is so huge and heavy that it feels incredibly solid. You barely feel the takeoff, it's that smooth. And next thing you know, you're in the air. When you're booking a business class ticket on the Emirates A380, you need to choose between the larger cabin or the mini cabin. But there's another decision you have to make too, and that is, which seat are you going to pick? If you're traveling with a companion, you'll want to be in the middle section, since the cabin has a 1-2-1 configuration. But the configuration is also staggered, meaning that the seats are in alternating positions in each row. If you'd prefer to be closer to your companion for easy conversation, book the E and F seats in the odd-numbered rows, since these are right next to each other. For that reason, they're sometimes referred to as the honeymoon seats. If you'd prefer a bit more space between you and your companion, book the D and G seats in the even-numbered rows, as these have the consoles between the seats. One downside of these seats, though, is that you're closer to the aisle. On the flight from JFK to Dubai, the girls took E and F seats, while Serge and I took D and G seats in the row right in front of them. If you're flying alone, or you just prefer more privacy during your flight, then of course, booking a window seat is ideal. But these are again in a staggered configuration, so you need to choose carefully. The A and K seats in the odd-numbered rows are clearly the superior choice here, since your seat is far from the aisle, right up against the window. On the flight back to JFK from Dubai, Serge and I both had K seats, and they were fantastic. By the way, if you enjoy videos like this about premium air travel, be sure to subscribe. We'll be coming out soon with a video about the new JetBlue Mint route to London, as well as a video about what it's like to fly Qatar Airways Q suites with kids. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss any future flight reviews. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let me take you on a seat tour. We had better lighting on our return flight since it was a daytime flight, so I'll show you the window seat. My favorite thing about the business class seats on the A380 is that there's so much room to put your stuff. The console has a spacious surface, but when you book a window seat, you also have this entire ledge along the window to use. The ledge has a storage bin, and at takeoff you'll probably find that they've placed your mattress pad in here. The console has two shelves. The bottom shelf comes pre-stocked with water and soda, and you can use the top shelf for storage as it's empty other than the socks and eye shades kit. In addition to the overhead light, you also have a reading light built into the seat, as well as more outlets than you're ever going to need. USBs, universal adapters, even an HDMI port. There's a tablet that you can use to control your TV screen, as well as a corded remote that does the same thing, plus it has controls for your overhead light and a call button for the flight attendant. There are buttons that allow you to adjust your seat recline to several preset positions, including lie flat, of course. Or you can use the arrow buttons to recline the seat manually to your liking. And right below that is where you can pull your table out from. There was a ton of leg room. For reference, I'm 5'5", and with my seat in the upright position, my feet were barely touching the footwell. Undoubtedly, though, one of the most fun features of this plane are the retractable motorized window blinds. Seriously, I could do this all day long. The seats do have individual air vents above, but how well they work depends on where you sit. On our outbound flight from JFK to Dubai, for some reason the cabin was kept at a swelteringly hot temperature. Even Surge was uncomfortable, so it wasn't just me being my usual sweaty Betty self. Since it was so hot, we had our air vents going at full blast, but we found that when our seats were in the lie-flat position, it created so much distance that we couldn't actually feel the air blowing at all. 
The window seats don't seem to have this issue since the ceiling is a bit lower on the sides of the plane than in the middle. Also, the cabin was thankfully kept at a much more comfortable temperature on our return flight. I've since bought this handy USB fan to bring with me on all future trips so that if I ever encounter this again, I can provide my own cool breeze. Thanks to our friends Oscar and Dan for the recommendation. I'll link this fan below in case you want to pick one up too. About an hour after takeoff, the cabin crew will come around to cover your seat with a mattress pad. Comfy mattress, girl. <laughs> oh, Ella, you look very relaxed there. Being that the seat was already so spacious and comfortable, I didn't think that a mattress pad would add much of anything, but wow. It's so thick and luxurious that it made this plane seat feel as close to a bed as you can get. Okay, now let's take a walk and check out the bathroom. There are a couple of slightly different bathroom layouts on the A380, and this is one of them. The bathrooms all come stocked with Bulgari cologne and perfume. Okay, here's something you're not gonna hear from a lot of male flight reviewers, and that is, it's time to take off my bra. Okay, now that I took care of that very important task, let's talk amenity kits. Emirates is definitely generous with the swag because you actually get a few different kits as part of your flight. As I mentioned earlier, your seat will come pre-stocked with socks and eye shades. Currently, they also give you a sanitation kit that includes hand sanitizer and a mask. And finally, you get the actual amenity kit, which is all Bulgari branded. The women's kit comes in a pretty gold pouch in either this design or this one. There are also two variations for the men's kits. They come in a gray pouch, either this design or this one. Inside, you'll find a variety of Bulgari products, along with basics like a toothbrush, hairbrush, tissues, and deodorant. The girls also got a fun kids pack that came in this little duffel bag and had an activity book and coloring pencils inside. Hi! Oh, you're watching Boss Baby? Yeah, I'm gonna watch Boss Baby. Okay, Boss tell Baby me, too. Tell me how it goes, because me and Ella are gonna watch it too. If there's one thing Emirates is known for, it's their in-flight entertainment system, known as ICE, which is an acronym for Information, Communication, Entertainment. ICE offers over 4,500 channels of entertainment with TV shows and movies in just about every language you can imagine. The business class seats on the A380 come with noise-canceling headphones and a generous 23-inch screen, which was the perfect way to enjoy one of my all-time favorite movies. Drop a comment if you know the name of the movie. On Emirates, even the food and economy is good. So it was no surprise that the dining and business class was excellent. On this route between JFK and Dubai, they usually serve two main meals, breakfast plus either lunch or dinner depending on the time of day you're flying. On the way to JFK, for dinner I had a smoked salmon carpaccio appetizer, a chari chicken for main, and chocolate mousse for dessert. For breakfast, I had the cheese omelet with chicken sausage, sauteed mushrooms, and asparagus. On the way back to JFK, for dinner I had a smoked duck appetizer, tandoori chicken for Maine, and another chocolate dessert. And for breakfast, I had the cheese omelette again. If you get hungry in between these main meals, Emirates also has a variety of light bites available to order, like small poke bowls or spinach pastries. The wine list on Emirates isn't that extensive. You essentially have a choice between two different reds and two different whites, plus one champagne and one port. But they do have a great selection of cocktails and mocktails. My favorite of the bunch was the breakfast martini, which has gin with marmalade, Cointreau, orange juice, and lemon juice. It tasted especially great with the warm nuts they serve. Hehe, <laughs> I said warm nuts. You can order drinks anytime from your seat, but if you're flying the A380, of course you have to pay a visit to the onboard bar and lounge. This experience is so much fun. Not that I'm old enough to have seen it myself, but to me this area feels like a throwback to the golden era of aviation in the 50s and 60s, when it was common for airplanes to be outfitted with cocktail bars and sometimes even pianos. Now there's no piano on the A380, but if you ask the cabin crew nicely, they'll still let you behind the bar so you can get these cheesy but fun pictures. We landed in Dubai and headed to the Emirates Lounge to hunker down for our very long layover. If you're going to have a seven hour layover, this is definitely the place to spend it. The Emirates Lounge is massive. At over 100,000 square feet, it can hold up to 1,800 passengers. There are multiple stations to get food and drink. Though due both to COVID and the late hour we were there, only a couple of the food stations were open. And many seating areas were roped off too. In addition to seating and dining areas, there are also rest areas where you can nap on comfortable loungers with blankets. 
There are bathrooms with showers so you can easily freshen up between flights. But hands down, my favorite feature of the lounge is this, the spa. Since we had such a long wait, Serge and I took turns treating ourselves to massages while the others stayed with the girls. It felt so luxurious to have a spa treatment in the middle of this long journey. The treatment room also had a private shower and sink, so I had even more privacy to freshen up than if I'd done this in the lounge bathroom. So if you find yourself with a really long layover in Dubai, I highly recommend that you treat yourself at the spa. Pretty soon, it was time to board our flight to Nairobi. We flew business class again, but this time on the Boeing 777. As you can see, the layout of this cabin is very different from the A380. While the A380 has a 1-2-1 configuration, which means that every passenger has direct aisle access, the 777 business class cabin has this rather awkward 2-3-2 configuration, which means that you could be stuck in a middle seat even as a business class passenger. The seats are significantly less comfortable than on the A380. As we got ready for takeoff, I had a bunch of stuff in my lap and realized that there was nowhere to put it. Unlike the A380, there were no surfaces to put things on or any stowage areas to speak of other than this small seat pocket, which could barely fit anything. This was a five hour flight, which isn't that long, so it wasn't the end of the world. But if you're not careful, you could be stuck on this inferior 777 business class, even on the long haul JFK to Dubai flight. That's right, I'm finally getting to the huge mistake that I allude to in the intro of this video. If you're booking a long haul Emirates business class flight, like JFK to Dubai, for example, be sure to check the aircraft type. You want to be flying the Airbus A380, not the Boeing 777. Your tickets are gonna cost the same, but if you book the 777 by mistake, you're going to get a far inferior business class experience. So check the aircraft type when you're booking. You can also figure out which flights are on the A380 by looking at the seat map first. You wanna see a 121 configuration like this not a 232 configuration like this. So what did our girls think of the flights? On a scale of one to five, what score would you give to the food on the flights? A 10 out of 10. Out of five. <laughs> a five out of five. <laughs> so at the bar, me and Ella got a snacky snack and the lady asked if we wanted to drink anything. So we got lemonade with no ice, and then the lady gave us 7-Up with ice, which is not what we asked for. So the service gets a 2. 2 out of 5? Seriously? Yes. Just because of that? It was... And the ladies were way nicer to Ella. Oh, is that the issue? Um, how would you rate the lounges from 1 to 5? So the one at JFK, before we got on the plane, that was very good because we had big seats and we had a nice view and the food there was really good. And then the lounge in Dubai was really big. Like, I loved it. It was good because you take a shower and have towels. Bye bye. Did you know that our family is visiting 22 cities in 2022? If you'd like to watch from the beginning of the series, just click that video right there to watch city number one. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. And follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Top Flight Family. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.